by a Western government. Hey. I'm reading messages that are still coming in. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Hey. 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 Thanks. I'm going out of town again. So I got it um, braided um, to start off my hot girl summer. I'm going to have a hot girl summer, babe. He just closed the door on me. Thanks. They're super lightweight. I've never had these before. Usually I get like traditional Marley braids. And I'm like, why would I ever do that again? These are called um, soft new locks. And I'm like, this shit is life changing. I like it. All right. Get my wine. What's left over of it. And... um. Finishing this off today and ooh, answering y'all questions sober. Um, what did I do today? Why am I so exhausted? I didn't make it to the gym, but I did go walking with one of my friends. I struggled to find a CPA all day long. And then the one that I did, she says me. I ain't like it. And then she ended it after she says me. Who? Well, I mean, I guess, I guess she's supposed to know. CPAs are hard to find right now because it's still tax season, and they moved the tax deadline. Cause I was like, I thought that was like April fifteenth or some shit. They moved the tax deadline back to May seventeenth, so all CPAs are busy finishing up taxes and shit. So hopefully you just don't, oh, I don't know, happen to need a CPA between now and then. Because you fucked. Um, I need a CPA. Like now. But she's asked me. And then she was like, I actually don't have any resources. Anyone that um, I can refer you to. And I was like, oh, I don't want nobody in your camp anyway. I'm good. You can keep your little punk ass non-referral. Because if you gave it to me, I wouldn't have wanted it no ways. Hmm. Childish. But other than that, spent the morning getting my hair braided. Um, because I peeked at the questions earlier. And someone said, Tell us about your day. Oh uh, woke up, went walking, got my hair braided. Um and I sat here and I processed orders all damn day. Uh, my Dymo machine. There's so many. There's so many beautiful downsides to being a business owner that no one talks about. Um, what are some downsides to being a business owner? So I hired a PR agent. I want to start doing more um, engagements and stuff. And I had a conversation with my marketing company and the the we, they weren't seeing eye to eye the marketing company gave me some great feedback that i want to pass on to other business owners and that until you have your time and it, it, until it's your time to shine you should be working you should be grinding you should be hustling you should be organizing you should be structuring um you should be trying to learn and grow because while we always hear that there's no such thing as bad publicity there is and I remember when I first started getting into business and learning more about business, IBM grew at such an exponentially fast rate. They couldn't keep up with the demands. They wind up going um, out of business just as fast as they got into business because all they were focused on was going up. And when you focus on just going straight up, but you don't have a sound foundational base, when your company gets to be so large and then stuff starts to hit it, it's going to fall over and crumble. And that's what happened with IBM. IBM was growing at such a fast rate. They were just throwing up buildings and businesses and offices here and there, left and right. 
And they start, they were just like focused on marketing, 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 marketing. So when the order started to come in and they didn't spend time on their base infrastructure, building up the company to sustain the orders that were coming in, they started to piss off their clients who have already paid those clients go. And they started telling other clients like, and this was before social media. And they're like, yo, don't do business with IBM because IBM's not going to hold you down. And IBM wind up, that's one of the biggest, not the only, but that's one of the biggest reasons because they outgrew what their infrastructure could handle. And so when I was talking to my PR agent and she has all these connections and she was like, I want to plug you here and I want to plug you here and I want to plug you here and I'm going to send you on this show. I'm going to connect you with this executive and blah, 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 blah. It sounds good in theory, right? And so when I ran it past my marketing company and she was like, that's cute, but we're not doing that. And I was like, well, why not? She's like, I've seen specifically when it comes to influencers, and let's say an influencer has some little, you know, e-commerce business, not to shit on anybody's business, but you're, you're not IBM. You know, you don't have this entire back office staff that as these orders start coming in, you got somebody back there cranking them out. I sell unicorn oil, right? And I thank God, like uh, this is this platform right here is more so for providers. I, I'm trying to successfully separate the two. And the other platform, Time Out Massage, is more so for clients. Just because this inf- this industry is already information overload, and I try to minimize, like I don't want to overwhelm people with all of the information that's stuck in here. So as we're like breaking it down into bite size, chunk size, um, digestible bites. I'm trying to intentionally keep the two separate. So clients will be over here, you know, but, um, and providers will be over here. And so on the provider page on timeout massages platform, I recently put up a, pla- um, a post and I was like, thank you God for not giving me all the things that I thought that I wanted. And that was the God's honest truth. A lot of, not all of, but a lot of the stuff that I post a lot of the time, it's like, this is what I'm going through. This is what I'm experiencing. Thank you God for not giving me everything that I thought that I wanted when I wanted it. You know, when I was praying for and you were like, "Mm, no, praise him. Won't he do it? Because the definition of faith is sight and seeing that I can rely and lean on um, my my not my own understanding, but his understanding and what's what he has planned for my life. Because there's been times where it was things that I prayed for. And so one of it, like you'll see other people hustling and grinding, they getting it. And we don't mean to, but we so often externally validate, not just in this industry. I think in this generation, we, our validation is based upon what somebody else got going on. So you could be killing it. You could be breaking, breaking generational curses in your family, but it's still in human nature in 2021. It's human nature to pause and be like, but I'm not going hard as Susie Jane over there. And Susie Jane, she got her shit in Target. So let me go and figure out how to get my shit in Target because my shit is, t- is better than Susie Jane, right? And you go and you try to get a, a contract with Target. And you Target, it's like, oh, oh, especially, you know, we try to get right. We stand with the black community in solidarity. Everybody's just reposting the same fucking shit. I'm like, do y'all even believe the fucking shit that y'all posting? Woosah, that's politics. It's the reason why I don't talk politics. But they're like, all right, we about to bang with you because you a black owned business. And they place an order for 500,000 units. Huh. Tink, tink. How you filling the order for 500,000 units? Target is a national chain, yo. Same uh, books. I wrote a book. Wanted to put it up in Barnes and Nobles and, and Books a Million before they went out of business. I think they went out of business. I don't know. If they didn't. Shout out. Kudos to you for not going out of business, Books a Million. You get you a little book. And they're an international chain and they want to put your, your book in all stores. How you fulfilling this order, Tink Tink? So I'm looking at you. I'm pushing a pause button on a lot of different things. I am the type that I'm going to jump off of the cliff and build the parachute on the way down. But eventually, at some point in time, you have got to stop and focus on building this parachute before you crash and burn on the ground. Like it, maybe it's a really big cliff. Maybe the cliff is two years long. So you got two years before you crash and burn at the bottom of this cliff. Or maybe you have a, a semi forgiving industry and your cliff is really like 10 years long. So you, you got 10 unspoken years. But as you keep growing, you're going to hit a wall somewhere that if your infrastructure, your back office, your foundation isn't together, you are going to lose business. 
and in our industry of post-op and body contouring that is driven by insecurity and vanity they don't give a shit about your little question uh, about your little oh well my son was sick and i was going to and blah 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 no they'll pull up your your policies in front of you and be like it says right here and this is wrong and i didn't sign this and blah 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 blah, blah. Your infrastructure needs to be able to say that, okay, well, here's my policies, here's my contracts, here's my whatever, here's, um, this is ha my, my functions, this is my back office, this is my staff, this is my team. You don't have that. You They will fuck up your business real fast. Like the amount of bloggers that you have, and not all bloggers in this industry are messy, but most of them are. So if you are tuning in and I'm on a provider page, so I guess right now I'm like rapping and vibing with my providers. Go and befriend these, um, and, and this isn't to say that just because you befriended the bloggers, they still won't put you out on front street, but at least they'll have a little bit of decency before putting you out on front street to be like, Hey, this was said about you. Do you want, care to respond? Because the clients don't have your best interest at heart. Uh, not all energy matches energy. And I try to move with integrity at all times. And I am humbly honored to have been blessed with some amazing clients i have serviced over i want to say I'm, I'm up to 23 personally in my professional tenure i've serviced maybe around 24,000 clients and out of the 24,000, i might have had like 10 who were assholes dickhead ain't shit piece of shits um rolled up in a pretty ball with a, a bow on it or some shit like all of my clients have been absolutely amazing and that starts with um transparency and communication and letting them know where you are in life but <laughs> this ain't this industry like where you can you can pull the the strings and the smoke and mirrors all you want to but it gets old very 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 fast and it is very unforgiving um so when i was talking to the marketing company and she's like, so while I support your goals and your dreams, we got to talk about this timeline because until we sit down and have a conversation about your infrastructure, I don't want you on Bravo because Pete, like you're, you're look at you. You're like, who wouldn't love you? You know, people who's like starting to love themselves wouldn't love you, but who wouldn't love you? And so they come to your website, click, 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 click. Oh, she sells this unicorn. Oh, click, 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 click. She was like, could you handle 2,000 people placing an order? She was like, it sounds good. The money sounds good. Who the fuck filling these orders, Ty? She was like, so until we continue to build, like I'm in the process of getting a warehouse um, because I've outgrown the storage units that I've had. Um, my manufacturer, she's like, you know, we, we got to get more people on board. She was like, until your back office is where it needs to be. She was like, I need us to minimize and truncate your exposure because I've worked with influencers before who didn't have their foundation and their infrastructure in place. They wound up getting all this publicity and they think it's cute until people start giving you money, which is the goal, right? But you're not getting paid just off of speaking engagements and cameos. You're getting paid because you offer either a service or you offer a product and then they want their stuff. They not, like that whole, oh my gosh, she's so cute. And she like, she retweeted my stuff. That gets old real fast. If people paying you money and, and don't let that shit have a comma in it, you need to produce. Um, that was, that was my quick little word of how my day went. <laughs> it went good. I got some, um, <laughs> some feedback from, uh, different people that I've hired to help me level up. I got to a, a stint in my career where I was like, you know, I think that all my shucking and jiving and my hustling will only get me but so far but past a certain point you have to start pulling in other people into your empire into your entity to help you grow and help make you better so while i did also spend most of today looking for a cpa it was because i acknowledge that me doing my own books i've reached a point and i've hit a wall where I don't either have the time anymore. And then because I don't have the time, I don't want to make any mistakes. And I am trying to do certain things. But now I don't have the same attention to detail that I would have. Oh, I didn't fucked up somebody's stuff. And now they want to sue me because the numbers is off or I underpaid them or I undershipped out a, a product or an order. Um, my marketing company, I can market myself all day long, but I'm a massage therapist. If it's not in the body, on the body or around the body, mm, I may or may not know it. And if I do, I don't know it in great detail because that's not the language that I speak. I speak massage. I speak anatomy, physiology. I speak biomechanics, kinesiology. 
Not marketing. Do I have great marketing ideas? Yeah, absolutely. But how much time would I be spending? And time is money. When you change your mentality and you go from spending money, um, exchanging time for money, and now you're exchanging money for money, you wind up making more money. When you want to grow and you want to excel, you have to get out of a worker's mentality and get into a boss mentality. Bosses do not use their time to make money. They use money to make money. And so I was like, all right, how much am I worth an hour? Let's hypothetically say I'm worth $150 an hour. So if I spend four hours trying to do this job, I just wasted $600 when I could have hired a professional who may have charged me $400 to do it in one hour. That's how you have to start looking at things when you're like, you reach a point, you're hustling so hard, you're burning your candles at both ends, you're waking up early doing your admin, you stand, you, you work on your clients during the day, you stay up late in the evening trying to process all these things when you should have probably been hired a virtual assistant, but you didn't want to because you're like, mm, I'm trying to save money and this is something I can do it myself. Just because you can doesn't mean that it's smart for you to do. Um, you would have saved more money because your, your time is now worth something. You would have saved more money investing in someone else who's also operating in their lane optimally, which will allow you to go back to operating in your lane optimally. Because God forbid, what if you burn a candle both ends, you work from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And you wind up falling asleep in the middle of a session. Guess what? I have done it. Or let's say you don't do a good job because you're tired as hell. I have done it. Or maybe... Um, you wind up moving slow. It throws your whole schedule off for the next day. You're giving piss poor service. Now clients are unhappy. It's starting to cost you money. I have done it. I feel like the Jay-Z of this industry. I made these problems and these mistakes so you don't have to. You get burnout once you start reaching a point where you need to evolve. You need to elevate. You need to start investing into other people to add them to your um, your platform so you can continue to grow. Otherwise, you'll hit a plateau and you'll move laterally but not vertically. Um, my suggestion to anybody who's in that, um, arena now where you want to shift from spending time to make money to spending money to make money is to pause and look at your foundation. You have got to fix the holes in your parachute. If you done already jumped off the cliff and I prefer that I prefer people to, oh shit, I got to call that girl back. She called me this morning when I was walking. I prefer, she was like, hey, can you have any suggestions on a business plan? Uh, I was like, yeah, don't do one. Oh my God, Ty, I said don't do it. It depends on what you, you're looking to do. Hold on, sips tea. It's not tea at all. It depends on what you're looking to do. And we will hide behind the excuses of things that allow us to stay within our comfort zone because the hard work that we need to do to get to that next level is so uncomfortable. We don't want to do it that we'll clamor and cling to something that is semi familiar. And that business plan is that thing that is semi familiar. So we will um, toil over putting together a business plan. Y'all I've been in business for 15 years. I didn't need a business plan until now. I was making money all in past 15 years without a business plan. Matter of fact, I think it was like six years of my business, I didn't have a website. And not in the beginning. It was towards the middle. Where I times was hard, hit a brick wall, didn't have money to re-up for my um my website domain. Even though it wasn't that expensive, judge a mother, I didn't have it at the time. So I was like, fuck it, I'll revisit this later. And then on top of that, I didn't like the website anyways. It wasn't functional. It was just so people knew that I wasn't a fraud. But anytime that I needed something or a client needed something, I did it by hand anyways. So I operated without a business plan. I operated without a website. I operated without business cards. Guess what? Got the business cards, never used them. Guess what? Made the business plan, never used it until I needed it. Yo, fuck all of these other things that you're hiding around. Go start the business. Set up the, uh, We could. I'll run this down real quick. I talk really fast. You ain't got to take notes. I saved the lives. So if you're interested or you haven't done it and you're talking about, all right, I want to go from changing time for money to money to money and I'm fixing my the holes in my foundation, this is what the foundation should look like. You go get an EIN 
from irs.gov. It's free but Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So as soon as you're done this live, you can go and do that if you haven't already done it. You take that EIN and you create an Articles of Organization and Articles of Incorporation. You use those two things and you go open up a business banking account. From that business banking account, you qualify for all these different types of loans and the PPP, which does not have to be paid back as long as it's underneath a certain amount. Um, you start your, you get a business website or if you don't want a website, guess what? Facebook business page is set up where you don't have to create a website if you don't want to. And you go and you start your business. That is jumping off the cliff. Now, if you already jumped off the cliff, you got the logo, you got the business account, you, you got the, um, the website, you got clients coming in and you just trying to level up and you want to make more money. I do offer marketing classes. I offer, um, spa millionaire calls. I'll put that link right here in just a second. But besides that, like, take a step back. Do you have contracts? What do your policies look like? Your terms and conditions? Um, what are your uh, disillusion clauses? Um, do you have packages? Have you written down your systems? Um, even down to training. So I decided I hired two new people. And as a part of my training, I set up a, a, a or the onboarding, I set up a two hour phone call to go over all of the policies as part of timeout. Well, it didn't fit in her schedule. It didn't fit in my schedule. And so I was like, the only thing that I can suggest or I would like to suggest to do is, um, did you just rob me? Smooth criminal. <laughs> I was like, the only thing I can suggest to do is, um, I was like, I could type all this up and I send it to you in an email and then we can have a follow up call about it later. And she was like, girl, I would actually prefer that. Because I can't stay still for no goddamn two hours. She was like, it was hard as fuck for me to stay still in your class. And I was, she was like, I mean, as you grow, like, if you think about it this way, once you write it down, you'll never have to do it again. And I was like, you're not wrong. I just wasn't in the mood to. I didn't want to. I was comfortable. It, it was, it's comfortable. What, what, what I was doing worked. Was it effective? No. And what was it draining? My time. And shit, apparently her time too. Like our schedule just didn't match up. Um, you do the hard work one time and then you don't have to do it again. And you can put that thing on repeat. You are now exchanging money for money. You are now like, okay, cool. I'm just going to go ahead and slide this to you. I'm going to upload this to my Zapier account. I'm going to upload it to my sign request, my DocuSign. Uh, I'm going to put it on automation through my um, platform processor. It doesn't matter what you like. I mix between Acuity, HubSpot, and Square for my platform processors with all of these other um, janky things that I pay for. But all of these things, when put together, it's a lot of moving pieces, but it allows me to have my time back where I don't have to sit on this two-hour phone call. I can type it up, upload it, send it out to her. She reviews it, and we have now a 15-minute phone call for me to review and answer any questions that she may have. Um, so your training, write it down. Um, how you do stuff in the order you do it, the way you do it, write it down, get an employee handbook, a, a company handbook or, or manual, uh, write it down. So as you want to bring more people into your organization, your organization needs to be organized. Uh, I didn't have anybody to give me that little tidbit. And I learned along the way through trial and error. And then people are going to stay where the disorganization is anyways. Um, whether it's clients, other professionals, other providers, I, you want, if you want to grow, get your shit together. If you want to blow up, or even if you don't want to blow up, let's say you just want to get, you know, to the next step that's there, get your shit together. Your foundation needs to be fixed. Stop, look at your parachute and see where the holes are and how you can make it better and greater. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Hold on. I'm going to type it for you. Here. All right. That is bit.ly backslash Tozy MMC. I think that's it. This is the link if you are a business owner and you want to set up a business mentoring consultation. Now, um, while this platform is usually out there for clients and whatnot, um, I, something was brought to my attention earlier today that made me feel so uncomfortable inside. And it was um, a, a doll and... She sent me a massage therapist's page and I was like, oh, no. And she was like, is this wrong? Well, it was just like the emoji or the gift that she sent. 
um, was like, I know this is wrong. And shout outs and kudos to you all for paying attention, for tuning in, um, for planning your plastic surgery journeys, for telling other people about this platform that exists, for you all to be able to do your research. And it's not just for clients. This is for providers to come and learn and do their research too. But because this industry is still new-ish, not everybody knows about this platform, that it exists for clients as well as providers. It's a super safe space for you to come and ask me questions. Whatever the fuck you want to know. As long as I know the answer, you could have it. Or if it's something that needs to go in training, I'll tell you to book a call. But either way, I'll make sure you get what it is that you're looking for. And so it was a therapist because of the rate that they are throwing up these surgery centers around the country. The surgery center is now in... Mia Aesthetics is like... They're, they're throwing them up faster than McDonald's and Starbucks and liquor stores and churches all at the same damn time. So this provider is in an area where Mia Aesthetics opened up another location. Um, there's an influx of clients who are locally getting surgery done now. Thus, there are three different types of aesthetic massages or um, body aesthetic treatment styles. You have incisional, which is day one and day seven. You have post-op, which is from... <sighs> Week two to week six backslash eight, which is also day eight to week six backslash eight. And then you have body contouring. Which, I mean, I don't mean to flick y'all off. I'll just do that. I totally overthought that. So body contouring is from week backslash eight onwards. Now, because these surgeries are being done locally and the clients, it's like usually they'll get surgery in the DR, the the, the people who have been doing this, they're not new to this. They true to this. They know what to do. The people who's in Miami, they, they know what to do. Nah, these joints is popping up in like bumperfuck South Dakota and in Georgia. And I'm not knocking Georgia, but incisional massage is not innate in Georgia. The further you get away from the Caribbean, the worse the treatment and sometimes even the worse the procedures wind up becoming. So here you have a Mia Aesthetics in an area that does not innately know incisional massage or the treatments that a client should be receiving from day one to day seven. And the provider, when I scroll through her page, she looks like she's a new massage therapist. Like she's been practicing uh, within the, like maybe three, maybe five years is a stretch, somewhere between three to five years. But it wasn't until September of last year that she started posting on post-op. I don't care who you are. There is no way in hell that you've been doing post-op for 5, 10, 15 years and you won't posting about it. No tink tink. Use the lie. So all of a sudden you discovered that this industry exists. And instead of investing in yourself to be able to invest in your clients to protect your clients, this whole is a whole self-trained uh, professional going on in said state. Because they now have a surgery center that is requiring or needing uh, clients are coming out looking for assistance. The therapist keeps calling it lymph in lymphatic massage when it's not lymphatic massage. I post up a video. I'll post it again. Stop asking for a lymphatic massage. These are not lymphatic massages. I'll go off on that rant on another day. Just stop it. And if you want to know why to stop it, go to my YouTube. My YouTube is perfectly tied. And I'm sitting here looking and I was like. Yo, you're the reason why, or you're a part of the reason why we are struggling to gain respect in the medical community. Um, you're why we we went through what we went through on uh, last year when the Surgeon General got in, in, involved with our industry and started shutting down massage therapists. Why are you massaging with a watch on, Tink Tink? Why are you pushing fluids out of open holes with no gloves on and? My nails are not short, but whenever I have nails that you, they're not flush with my skin, I wear gloves. Like there were just so many things wrong. And I'm just like, yo, we as a community have got to do better. Um, the amount of occupational common sense that is missing blows my mind because what happens when you do incisional and you have no idea what you're doing, you're self-trained, you went to YouTube University, you're doing things that are unhygienic, unsafe, unsanitary, and I don't care how you try to justify it or whatever um, bubbles you try to throw on top of it and say it was clean. When clients start getting infections, they don't actually blame us. They blame the surgeon. The surgeon gets attacked. 
Um, but what, it's a trickle down effect when surges are getting attacked and when surgery centers are getting attacked, girls start canceling their surgery because they were like, oh shit, I need to do more research. I got to find another surgeon. Who does that affect? It affects us. So while you think that this trickle down effect has nothing to do with you because you're in another industry, you're in another state. No, it does. As an industry, as a whole, we have got to do better at being our brother's keeper. We have got to do better as a people as, at, at holding some form of accountability because we are all in the goddamn same boat. Um, clients wind up canceling their surgeries or or you have some shit where, I don't know, maybe the surgery center. You, you've been around for like 10, 15 years. You experienced some shit. I lost $5,000 and I don't think it was a day. I think it was a week. Um, when... Yatna Riviera's mom got killed and then Sipla shut down. All those surgeries got canceled. All of those clients <laughs> between the three states that I was servicing, they was canceling their services with me. And even if I was like, no, I have a no refund policy. No, no, no. Guess what happened in 2020? COVID. So banks and business and financial processors are they losing money too and they hurting so when the client calls up and they're like i need my money back and if you don't give it to me i'm changing banks they were giving money back for services that we actually fucking did and i had to threaten to go sue them for like well we need can we talk about this like what are you doing here's my policies here's a copy of her license here's a picture of me inside her house and they still gave the money back i'm gonna calm down just a little bit as new providers come into this industry, instead of approaching with hate or attacks, with ego, pride, instead, I encourage us all to approach new providers and new dolls in love. Light and love, light and love, light and love. If someone is doing something wrong, we can't turn a blind eye because it will indirectly wind up affecting us. As we are continuing to build out this industry and gain more respect from other professionals, we have got to move a certain type of way. There are no more naked clients. I, I get your clients are so comfortable and they, by the time they come to you, they've been super naked in front of everybody else. Give them disposable underwear. Give them disposable bras. Um, when you see someone that's, that's off, DM them. Introduce yourself. Say hi. There's an entire community that they just stepped into. And this community was here way before you, Tink Tink. Like, you don't just get to come in and start disrespecting the industry that we've worked so hard to build and create. The reason why you can operate and you can make money is because we was here doing it before you. Don't disrespect us. But don't come at people like that. Instead, introduce yourself. Offer, hey, you know, have you checked out this platform? Do you know this exists? Do you know this exists? Um, whenever I give advice, I ask permission to give advice first. I don't just try to slide in and disrespect and shit on you and what you're doing. Hey, you know, I, I see what you're doing. I'm, I'm rocking with it. You're doing such a great job. Can I offer some advice that you didn't ask for? And if they say no, they say no. Cool. But most, I, I don't think I've ever had anybody tell me no. And we, it, it opens up the avenue for us to have an adult conversation without me talking to them like they're a child, as if they don't know any better. Even if they don't, you don't get to talk to people that way. You're not going to make progress that way. Um, I saw a, another, like this industry, it has so many, um, opportunists, so many scammers. We can't go around pl playing Captain save a Ho from a client standpoint or from a provider standpoint. We are, or you should be too busy to go around checking any and everybody. But if you see something, say something. Um, I saw a surgeon, another the surgery room had um, a review or someone's experience posted and the girl was like, yeah, um, bedside manner. Like I'm never going to repute someone's experience. That's your experience. Your experience is your experience, but, and they, they do need to be coachable, but I wasn't always coachable. You meet people in different, it is not your job to change, fix, adjust, heal, or save anyone. God already did that. It is your job. You are called to love. That's it. He didn't tell you to do anything else. He didn't even tell you to like them. He said love them. And so when you come to people, you have to meet them on their level. 
expose them to different opportunities and platforms. If they choose to pick up what you're putting down, that's on them. You did your job. You did your part. You didn't attack. You didn't diminish. You didn't belittle. You presented a better way. And then I, will, I was always raised with, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. Go on and live your life the way that you think is right and then allow other people to witness it. Those who witness his good works, go and spread the good news. But it doesn't have to be by mouth. Actions speak louder than words anyways. So I wasn't always coachable. But then people who cared about me enough, they still allowed certain things. Not They didn't allow certain things to transpire, but they would present the information. And then maybe, maybe while the seed was laid, God didn't water it until two years later. And I hit them up like, hey, yo. And because that bridge wasn't burned... I was able to come and ask questions and level up like you. I'm not that type of person that you can go and tell me that the stove is hot. I'm like, oh, maybe it's hot for you, but our hot is different. You can't tell me that that hot sauce is hot because my taste buds ain't like yours. I'm also a Taurus and I don't listen to shit, but present opportunities for people to become um, exposed to a better way without you ramming it down their throat. But um, the, the client, she uploaded her review and in the review, she was like, and I also talked to, uh, it was something about her boobs, some shit going on with her nipples. And she was like, and I also talked to another surgeon. And that surgeon was like, yeah, the paper tape that your surgeon left on that caused necrosis. How, Sway? In what medical textbook? And on what planet? Because it ain't Earth. I, apparently, I've, I've been listening to the news. It's been on it. It's white noise in the background. And they were able to, like, create um, breathable oxygen on Mars or some shit. So maybe in Mars. Maybe Venus, maybe on that demoted ass Pluto, but not in on Earth in America. Well, paper tape cause necrosis. Necrosis is cellular death. It uh, anything could cause freaking necrosis. Like, but it's usually based around technique stuff that happened inside of the OR or maybe you don't know how much scar tissue was there. If the client was honest about their surgery and their pre um, pre surgical health, had they had surgery before, there's a decreased amount of internal oxygen. Paper tape will not cause necrosis. But in the review, she was like, "Yeah," and that surgeon said that because another surgeon, a different surgeon, not the one who did her surgery, the paper tape caused her necrosis. And I was like, "Yo, you motherfucking clout chaser. That's tacky." In this industry, so many people will use somebody else's platform. And pull them down to big themselves up. Don't be a part of that. You know, because we don't have a board, like, who you can go and snitch to? Who you going to tell? Ghostbusters? I, there's only but so much we can do in trying to spank people and reprimand them for not doing things right. But that shouldn't be the goal anyways. You shouldn't want to tear somebody down. You should want to inspire and encourage and educate and enlighten. And that can't be done by being so fucking catty and going at each other. Like, why would... I don't understand. I don't know who that other surgeon is. But either he's poorly trained or he's just a hater to say some dumb shit that paper tape causes necrosis. No different than another massage therapist talking about, oh, well, that massage therapist gave you fibrosis. If you came to any of Ty's trainings, you would understand from a medical standpoint that there are two different types of fibrosis. And neither of which can a massage therapist fucking cause. We are here to help. If something goes awry, unless it was out of malice, it's not their fault any fucking way. Bitch, you went and got this surgery. I'm trying to help your monkey ass out. I've been going off for 38 minutes, and apparently we got questions. All right. Let me get to... Hold on. I, I, I didn't get... The very first question that was right here said, tell me about your day, and I've been going off ever since. That was my day. My day was uh, my marketing company... And uh, getting my hair done, went walking, marketing company, told my PR manager, no, we need to fix Ty's foundation. And I was like, I'm with the shits. How did you learn to release power? Ooh, that's a good one. I had to humble myself. Come boldly before the Lord with all the desires in your heart. But that's the only person you need to come boldly before. Everybody else, you need to be humble. I had to humble myself. This is a damn good question. Go on, Frankie. I had to humble myself for me to be able to not just say I need help, but then to accept it. Um, I'm a boss. I'm used to doing shit on my own, handling business, getting shit done. Um, and I am in the process of planning a wedding. Hired a wedding planner because while I could do it by myself, totally don't have time for that. 
So instead, I found somebody else who's like beasting out in their lane. And then planning the wedding, there has been several times that she had to check me like, hey, Todd, this is my lane. This is what I do. You do that massage shit. But this, I got this. Let me do my job. And it's not always easy. It's not so much releasing power as it is trusting. I don't trust well. I think a lot of people, we've gotten, we got fucking trust issues as a, man, I got questions if you made it to 30 and you don't have some form of trust issues. Like what rock did you grow up under to not have been burnt by someone or something? And all it takes is one, one good time for somebody to let you down. Or, you know, I, I use the analogy of superheroes and they flying through the sky. You ain't never seen Batman drop nobody. Superman ain't never let nobody go midair and be like, whoops, my bad. So when you allow people into your life and you give them enough reins and you trust them and then they do human shit like let you down. Now you develop super trust issues and you're struggling to release the power. You improve your discernment. You ask better questions. In this industry, there are no victims. If you get taken advantage of, that was on you. You didn't do enough research. You didn't ask enough of the right questions. You trusted the wrong person. That is an extension of you. Somebody, because get this, con artists, scammers, they some of the most charming people in the world. When it comes to releasing power and allowing myself to invite other people in to help me, I had to improve my discernment. I had to know and have a better definition of who I was, who I am not, what I wanted, what I needed help with. Even if I didn't know how to do it, I knew what I wanted. And the, the two hardest things that you ever do in life is figure out what you want and then allowing yourself to have it, getting out of your own fucking way. So I had to clearly define what do I want and then who can help me get to there. And I didn't go with just the first person who offered assistance. I made that mistake before, whether it's friends or family, people who someone who has something that I need that I didn't have, which was time. And I would go with that option. And that's not always the, the best viable option. Or if it is, it's a short term option. Spend time in your business, investing in learning people, learn how they move, learn their, are they consistent? Are they reliable? Talk to other clients who they've used before, give them smaller projects and see how they handle. And they rock out with those smaller projects before you give them the bigger projects. But it took some time and that process never changes. Whether you've been in business for five days or five years, you still have to, to sort people out. You know, not everybody gets to go to college just because you got the money and you want to apply to college. They sit there and they interview you and then they ch they're interviewing you to see if they're going to let you in to charge your ass an arm and a leg and a firstborn child and a baby goat to come to their establishment. You got to prove that you're worthy. Um, Steve Harvey uses this analogy all the time when he talks about um, spouses and giving up the nookie or he calls it the cookie or some old ass term that he uses. I love me some Steve Harvey because someone showed this to Steve Harvey and tell him I love him. But he talks about giving up benefits that you go and you work for a company before 90 days before they give you the best of them. But we don't do that with ourselves when it comes to anything associated with us. We're led to be so trusting until someone burns us. And then now we got trust issues. Who the fuck told you to trust off the break anyways? Nobody else trusts you off the break. They make you work for your shit, make them work, but you, you make them work and earn your business. You earn, they earn the ability. They earn the privilege to be in your life and a part of your business by you setting those requirements. And it starts by researching what you want and who can, is the closest to get you to what it is that you're looking for. And then it gets so much, it doesn't get easier, you get better. So figuring out what marketing company I wanted to go with, figuring out what PR agent I want, and then giving them the opportunity to show me like, all right, I've already discerned you. I've interviewed you. I'm not giving you all of whatever until you show me that this is a good fit. Not everybody's going to be a good fit. And then things happen and things change. I don't want people to get comfortable when it comes to me. You need, whether it's personal or professional, the way that you got somebody and, and the way that someone gets your business, they need to continue to hustle in that same modicum to maintain your business. Um, but uh, it, it don't get easier. You just get better. All right. Any recommendations for a wound specialist in Atlanta? 
um, I reached, so I, I peeked and I saw this question before I came on this live and I reached out to my Atlanta boo. Her name is Body Aesthetics ATL. Her real name is Katiri. If you're in Atlanta, Katiri is the shit. Katiri has been around for years. Katiri is old school and how she moves and, um, yo, Katiri is just bomb. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever had anything bad to say about Katiri. But I reached out to her and she told me, um, I want to say Kaiser Permanente. Um, don't go. No, I don't know where y'all would go. Just everybody stay the fuck still. Hold on. I'm going to peek real quick. All right. I'm back. Y'all miss me. It was um, a Kaiser. Kaiser Permanente has a wound care clinic. Now, you can type in if you're looking for a wound care specialist, you can look for any wound care nurse. Um, there's wound care centers. Um, literally, Google is your friend. Type in, and I'm not trying to say that to be shady, but type in wound care center near me and it'll bring up all of the things that are nearby. I don't know why I didn't think about it. I saw the question and I just asked her because I knew she was in Atlanta, but she said Kaiser Permanente has a wound care clinic, but with Kaiser, usually to use their services, don't you have to be a, a member of Kaiser? So wound, uh, there's wound clinics all over Atlanta. Just type in wound clinics and the wound clinics will have wound specialists working at the clinic what's next how do you feel about IV therapy after surgery can you do this as an LPN you got to check the state if you to see who can do wound, um wound care who can do IV therapy I love IV therapy it um is intravenous where intravenous intravenous where the vitamins wind up making it to a client system right away and then from a business standpoint I don't promote things that just because it don't make money, if it doesn't make sense, I don't care how many sense it makes, if it doesn't make actual common sense or occupational sense. And in this case, IV therapy is both, especially if you are a nurse. But the require um, the requirements of who can offer it differs according to states, because apparently we govern ourselves. Who the fuck came up with that? I mean, I guess it's smart in certain occasions, but other times it's just overwhelming and unnecessary. But you'll look at what you can and can't do in your state and then if it's something that you want to offer but you're not qualified to i would tell you to break bread with somebody it's better to get half of the donut than no donut i might just be saying that analogy because i'm hungry it's better to get half the bottle of wine than no wine whatsoever whatsoever if that is an amazing service to add to your practice um if you don't qualify, offer it anyways and just bring in somebody else that does. What's next? How do you treat a client that has a very large, dense, hard FUPA area at 10 days post-op? Hold on. All right. Um, lymphatic massage. Um, make sure that they're compressing their fupa properly kt tape uh you might need to add in a um, postpartum system to lift up the fupa if the fupa is large and hard which you did use those words very large dense hard fupa area so a postpartum system but turn it around backwards so usually the postpartum system will snap at the front turn it around so that big wide bulky part will go under tape them and then put it underneath where it's underneath the bottom of the fupa hoist it up and strap it in the back they still need to have on their um cami underneath they still need to have on foams they still need to have on boards um i would uh, encourage them to change their diet decrease salt out of the diet um what else uh there are four standard um or three and a half standard pieces of equipment that you use in post-op and only three and a half um ultrasound would help um is there anything else that i can say what i don't want i want to be able to be helpful and be effective but then i don't want to give out information that i know other people have paid to come to my classes to learn and so out of the I'm, I'm giving information that's already regular readily available and some other stuff that you know i don't mind detailing anything past that you got to come to my classes um, if you have now, here's, here's a, a leg up. If you come to my classes, there is a, um, a Facebook group dedicated to just the students who were already in the classes. 
and they can post their case studies in there and I answer from top to bottom as if it's my client. There are benefits to actually investing in yourself and attaching yourself to my platform and coming to the classes. Certain things is like you you can't outsmart the teacher. I can give all this stuff out, but up to a certain point because afterwards you really just need to come to the class because anything else that I'm giving also is coming with contraindications, theory, um, psychology of business, uh, knowing the order, the equations. Like there's a lot that goes into it that is only broken down and digestible, made sensible. That's not a word, but I like it. I'm gonna go with it. Made sensible in the classes. This right here, this is generic information. Um, it will help the client, but past that, you got to invest in yourself. Come to the classes. The next set of classes are going to be um, July 8th to July 13th. Uh, we probably won't publish that or promote that until middle of May. But I'll let y'all know here it's going to be somewhere between July 8th and July 13th. All right. Um, does carboxy therapy help with fibrosis or hardness? Yes, it does. Only if it's actually uh, carboxy, though. There's something called reabsorption. Reabsorption and fibrosis are not the same. If you're using carboxy on a client that is doesn't have fibrosis, you're going to fuck up their skin. Um, I wouldn't uh, encourage or suggest using carboxy on a client that isn't at least three months post-op. Um, or if you are a client and you have fibrosis, if you are at least three months post-op, all right, then yes, carboxy will fix it. But if it's not even actually fibrosis, there's when it comes to scar tissue, there's levels to this shit. There's so many different types of scar tissue. You have keloids, you have uh, fibrosis, you have fibrin. There's two different types of fibrosis. Um, uh, you have um, an overdevelopment of collagenous fibers mixing with connective tissue. Like all scar tissue is not created the same and equal. So if you wind up using carboxy and it's not actually fibrosis, you will fuck up the client's skin or client, your skin will be or potentially be fucked up. I don't know what the question where is, but if you're asking about the classes, it's going to be in Maryland because I live in Maryland. Is soreness related to some hardness, for example, if it's just a muscle that's sore or if it's fibrosis? I don't understand this question. But based off of what I think I understand of the question, I'm going to say yes. Is soreness related to some, um, related to some hardness? Yeah, you had surgery. Um, if it's just a muscle that's sore, if I doubt that it's a muscle. It's probably because of, um, there's so many different reasons as to why it could be or what it could be. Um, it could be that you didn't get the right procedure. It could have been that you needed a tummy tuck, but you got lipo or BBL instead. It could be because you didn't have good post-op care. It could be because you didn't have a proper diet, you're eating too much salt and retaining fluid. And now that you're out of the woo, it started to harden. It could be that you didn't have on the right faha or you weren't compressing properly and it wound up um, developing a seroma that um, hardened over time. And now it's not drainable. And whenever there is fluid, fluid contains toxins. And when those toxins are moved or shifted or irritated in any way, shape or form, it burns and it hurts and it's sore. It could be so many reasons as to why you are sore. What I would instead suggest is that we book a virtual consultation and I'll be able to look at you and tell you or give you a better insight what's going on and to how to fix it. I don't do vague very well. I, I need direct, direct questions so I can give you direct answers. I, hey, my, I, my surgery was this day. I'm this tall. I had this many children. I had this build. I have, um, this was my diet. Like the more that you give me, the more I can give you. As soon as I seen this question, I stopped and I was like, the fuck are you talking about? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. That's so vague. That's like, Hey, if I go outside in the summertime, am I going to be hot? The summertime where? Are we going out in the summertime in Alaska? Summertime in Hawaii? Are we going out in the summertime in Denmark where it's like super close to the South Pole? You got to be direct. Um, and if it's something I can't answer or I can't do, I will tell you. Brooklyn Chin wants to know, do you te teach massage classes? No. I te teach post-op classes and I teach body contouring classes. Neither one of them are massage. Um, massage is a two page definition, literally, if you go and look it up, two page definition 
and the things that we do are outside of massage um which is why we're in the bubble bind that we're in with little minimized mitigated regulation except in the state of new york new york has a lot of shit on lock and probably not even in a good way um how much are the courses the courses range um anywhere from if you tune in virtually i think it was like 1700 up to if you do bundles maybe like 7500 to 8000 um and then there's vip options so it just it depends the classes are all over the place um all right what's next hi i'm trying to have a hot girl summer too but i'm six months post-op from a bbl and i recently started having tenderness in my butt and hips is that normal uh it can be depending on if your diet that's a good question and thank you for telling me it's your six months post-op details they matter um it can be normal if you are more active than you were before if your body uh processes fluid slow you heal slow you had anesthesia in your system longer than others would have um if you are doing things more that you weren't doing before like when you get a bbl and then the first time that you go for a jog or a run your body's not used to carrying around that extra weight in that specific area it changes your center of gravity so it's not that it is uncommon or unnatural um it if you were 12 months post-op i would say it's uncommon and unnatural but at the end of the day, surgery is uncommon and unnatural. So what is weird and foreign to one person is normal to another person's body. I would tell you to stretch, drink water, um, look into taking some magnesium tabs or magnesium oil. Um, it helps to get rid of the lactic acid buildup. Go get you some maintenance massages. Maybe it, uh, another thing that will affect it too is if you recently stopped wearing your faja, or you hopped out of compression and your body is adjusting to carrying that extra displaced weight and, and it's unsupported now. So, um, but at six months, I, it's nothing I would worry about. Um, if you are concerned, one thing that you can do leading up to and trying to figure out what's going on with you, um, keep a thermometer by your bedside and take your basal temperature every single morning. If something is going on or wrong with your body, that is the time when your body will let you know. Um, your body runs a fever when shit is wrong or shit is off. As long as it's not sore to the touch, I'm not concerned, but take your basal temperature every morning for three days. And if it is above um basil keep in mind if it is above 100 houston you have a problem and then i would tell you to go get an antibiotic but you uh you it sounds normal ish oh we got three questions in two minutes yay all right what should i look for when booking a lymphatic massage therapist not that all right um mrs thomas 03 hello darling hello my name is ty and i teach people how to get surgery and not die and shit and after getting surgery, you're not initially looking for a lymphatic massage therapist. You're looking for a post-op provider, a post-op therapist, a post-op clinician. If you don't find one of those, then you will detour to a lymphatic therapist. Just know that the in its innate sense, lymphatics do not do the same thing as post-ops or post-op therapists do. If you don't find a post, um, a lymphatic massage therapist, then you can, your last resort, uh, you have two last resorts. You can contact Massage Envy and hope to God that they didn't lie on what they said they could do or what they were qualified to do. You can also book a virtual consultation with me where I'll talk you or your spouse or a family member through how to take care of you. It's called a cape off tutorial because I think all of my clients are superheroes. And at some point in time, you got to take a cape off and let other people love on you. When you're looking at qualities that one possesses, you want someone who um, asks their credentials, how long have they been doing it? Um, uh, look to see how clean they are, how clean their facility is. Um, look over their policies um, and just ask some like random ass industry questions that you know the answer to. Like, when should you start cavitation? When can you start with therapy? Ask them if they know the difference between a stage one and stage two faha. When should you be switching to your stage two faha? All of these answers are available for free on my platform. And if that provider can't answer those questions, mm, that's not the provider for you. I think those are the, not the only, but that's the easiest ways to 
um, sift through and see what um, somebody is about. All right, we got 56 seconds. I came in so late. Sorry. Did we discuss proper time to tape yet? I already took notes about spacing. Whoop, whoop. Go you. Thank you. Because the other provider that pissed me off today, her, she does a KT tape wrong and swear she's a beast at it. And I was like, but you fucking suck. Humble yourself. The people that you're talking shit about in your posts is the people that you need to be learning from. I digress. No, we didn't talk about taping. You could start taping at three days post-op. Last. Oh, hell, stop asking questions, y'all. Yo, we got 27 seconds. How soon can you start my lymphatic massage after mommy makeover? Um, anywhere from day uh, one to day seven. It depends on the type of procedures that you had. What to look for? Um, I answered that. And then uh, do you have anyone in Atlanta you can recommend for body contact?